a little while ago, I posted a tweet that said, if you could go back to when you first started doing bug bounties, what advice would you give yourself? And this got a lot of attention and a lot of good responses. So I figured why not share them with you as we come to the end of the year. And I know a lot of people are going to want to get into bug bounties in 2024. But before we jump into the video, I need you to do me a huge favor. I'm going to make coffee and during that coffee break, what I want you to do is write me a comment and tell me what kind of content do you want me to make specifically? Drop me a comment, describe the video, what topics you want me to cover, what phone types, maybe a lab that you want me to cover. And if I like your comment and I want to make that kind of content, I'm going to gift you a subscription to show then maybe to Pentester Lab or something similar. And as a thank you, I'm going to gift you with a subscription. So drop me that comment. I'm gonna make that coffee and we're gonna jump into the video. Okay, let's talk about the advice that I saw that was the most relatable and also the ones that I thought they were the most impactful. I'm gonna jump into them, but before we do that, I wanna start with a piece of advice that was given to me. And I think if you've been watching a lot of my videos in the past, you know that I always say consistency is key. This is not one of those advice that's gonna make it to the video. This is just something that I apply to everything in life, whether it's from hacking to content creation to whatever it is that I'm doing in my life consistently has turned out to be the key to anything that turns into success. If you want to become successful, I highly recommend being consistent with everything that you're going forward with. The first thing that I saw was a amazing tweet by Shubs, aka Infosec AU. And he said to specialize things that interest you the most and become the best you can be at them. For example, source code analysis, front end exploitation, DNS related vulnerabilities, and then use these skills across as many bug bounty programs as possible. Honestly, there's a lot to unpack here. The first thing is learning things that interest you the most are going to be easier to grind out those hours to learn them, but also you're more passionate about them. And that passion is going to be what drives you to learn and dig in deeper into those topics. So learning these topics that you like is going to be the key to becoming successful. But also if you pick up more and more of these special skills, like shop mentioned the source code analysis, DNS with vulnerabilities, whether you want to do recon or supplement takeovers and so on, you can apply them to multiple bug bounty programs, which could later become different sources of income based on the number of bug bounty programs that you apply them to. So that's a really good place to start. If you're starting in bug bounties in 2024 and the 2023, you want great advice. This is probably one of the best ones to learn things that are interesting to you because you can start learning multiple things that you're passionate about and then apply them to as many bug bounty programs as you can. The next one, which is a big ouchie for myself personally is from both Justin Reinerator and Nathaniel aka and, and Wakelam on Twitter. Nafi says, I dedicate far more time to fully flesh out and report everything in winning areas. There's many attack surfaces on Yahoo where I made 50,000 where I should have made 200,000 if I buckled down and spend the week on it. And then Justin followed up and said, I want to echo this advice. In the beginning, I would find a few bugs and think the scope was dried up. There's very likely another breakthrough just around the corner if you spend more time on it. Also, don't sweat it if you spend the first hours or so without a bug, it will come. And that is really, really relatable because there's been times where I've spent a lot of time on a bug bounty program I thought I found every single vulnerability and then I show up to a life hacking event or I look through the activity from this particular program and I see a number of different bugs being paid out and it kind of shows that there are more to look at and also keep in mind that companies are continuously developing and releasing things especially if you come across a new startup that has just launched a bug bounty program but also if you do identify a pattern of mistake make sure you are milking it. You're looking for that pattern, not only in, within that application, but also across all of the assets and scope for that bug bounty program. If they've made that mistake once, I promise you, and I guarantee you they've made that same mistake multiple times. You just have to look for it. Next one comes from three of the top hackers that I know from Nagley, Code Can Care, and Jason Haddix. They all said something along the lines of, 
collaboration. And honestly, from my personal experience, if it wasn't for collaborating with some amazing hackers like Zayed, Smeagol, ZLZ, Dakin, and people that I just I really got to put myself around and work with them, I wouldn't have not learned as much as I have because they all had a perspective different than mine. They approach problems, vulnerabilities, or the way they exploited particular vulnerabilities or tested for them in a different manner. And just being around them and looking over their shoulder or just bouncing ideas off of them exposed me to a different way to look for these vulnerabilities or even exploit them. So let's read Eric's tweet about this. He said, collaborate and trust others. Two hackers combined can find five times more bugs than working individually. Also, more fun with others to celebrate your success and empathize during challenges, which also goes to say, if you have someone you're working with, you can collaborate with them. You also celebrate and go through those down times when you're not getting any bugs together. Then Nagli followed up something similar. It says, find like-minded people to share the journey together. It's always a win-win situation. Even if you just speak randomly about life without disclosing each other's bugs, it can give you a lot of insight, whether it's celebrating a big bounty or just ranting at slower times, which is amazing. And I think this next one by Jason Halex also goes hand in hand. He doesn't talk about collaboration, but it's an important notice that comes with collaboration and being around a lot of good hackers that says, don't compete or compare to others, challenge and compete with yourself. Failure is just a lesson. Appreciate teaching you how to adjust. And honestly, I know this is not about collaboration, but when you collaborate with other people, you see their successes while you're not having a lot of success, you're going to start to compare yourself. And honestly, that's not good to do. The reason why a lot of people say don't compare yourself to others is because we all come from different backgrounds. We all have different experiences in life and not all of us have gone through similar experiences to be where we are today. So please don't compete yourself to other people and always, always what I recommend and do for myself is I compete and compare myself with who I was six months ago, a year ago, even five years ago and see where I have gone so far. And that is a better way and healthy way to push yourself forward than competing and comparing yourself with others. It is good to have a little bit of competition inside and want to compete and become better or become as good as your friends, but make sure it is not in a toxic way when it's going to send you backwards instead of move you forward in your journey, whether it's bug bounty, hacking, pen testing, or whatever it is. The next one isn't so much about bug bounties and not so much about hacking itself, but it's just a mentality that comes with a lot of bug hunters that I see, especially new hunters, is that they take things very personally, whether it's a triage or pushing back on their report, a security engineer saying no to their bug bounty finding or not finding as impactful, they take it very personally. And this is really good advice that came from Zishano. He says, remove emotions. When I first started, I was passionate about helping companies fix bugs, but also learn to prevent them. Big mistake, get a trick bug bounty is like bug in, cash out, nothing more. Also, don't marry a bug, submit and move on. And there's a lot of emotions here. I can see people getting excited about their bugs and they get rejected, they get down, they become really sad about it. Or even times that I've seen people that are super, super passionate about a vulnerability, but then it doesn't turn out to be as impactful. So it kind of scares them away from doing more bug bounty hunting and bugs. Honestly, set expectations low, report whatever bugs you get, and then you get paid for it. But I'm not saying... Don't push back if the bounty isn't what you expected or if the criticality is not something you accept or agree on, but it's just don't get emotional and don't act on emotions if that's something that turns you off or just doesn't work out the way you want it to. And last but not least, this is probably one of my favorite tweets. It came from Mihai Felsigi. I think I'm saying your name right. I'm sorry if I butchered it, but this is such a good tweet. And I saw a lot of people will respond with a similar comment that says, hacking is not a skill nor a collection of skills. It's a mindset. If you're not a hacker in every aspect of your life, then you're not a hacker. You just to do it with technical inclinations. And honestly, that is so good. If you are a hacker, if you're a top hacker, if you want to become a good hacker, hacking has to become a part of your day-to-day -day life. It becomes how you think, how you find loopholes in things, how you find bypasses with the problems that you have. You just become really, really good at problem solving or getting through barriers that are put up by life. And I think this is one of the most important advices to have hacking is a mindset and not a set of skills all right i think those are some really good advice you tell me do you have an advice that you want to give to others if you do drop me a comment i'll also give away some goodies to people with the best comments and the best advice so drop me that comment and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button like the video and i will see you all next week peace